Welcome back. We're in the Exodus chapter 20. We've gone through all the covenant in chapter 19, and then we have uh, now the preamble to the Ten Commandments yesterday morning, and today let's look at commandment number one. We're in Exodus chapter 20, and we're simply going to read a couple of words here at verse 3. Here they are. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. So here it is, the first of the ten, and there is the plan. Uh, there were many gods out there, many false gods that were worshipped and so on, but God starts off, and they come from Egypt, right? Where it's polytheism, pantheism, there's gods everywhere, every kind of god overlapping. Uh, that's what they came out of, that's what they grew up in. They've known nothing different from that. And now God is, brings them out, he brings them to the mountain, he brings them to himself, and he puts them in a covenant. They say, yes, we're all in a covenant with you. And then God says, okay, this is the rules now, and here it is. And number one, the very first one, you shall have no other gods before me. So suddenly, pantheism is out, polytheism is out. We're strictly in monotheism. There is one God and one alone. And so the God of heaven and earth, Yahweh, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each three, three persons distinct in one, uh, one being, one God, and that is the God, the only God they can worship. And of course, I know here in the Old Testament, we don't see as much as cl to clear the three distinct persons, but here we have this ultra, here we have this ultra command, you will have no other gods before me. And really, this one command, the Ten Commandments is almost almost summarized it purely right here. Now we're gonna have the last six is man's relation to his fellow man, and the first four is going to be man's relation to his God, more particularly, but there's a lot of overlap still in these. But the first one, if you don't put anything before the God of heaven and earth, that is going to clear the way on every other thing. But isn't it easy, isn't it easy to have something else, something else that will uh, get in the way? You know, I was reading in one of these, I was reading one of these commentaries and um, somewhere I just read in these commentaries that it's interesting how people who've got a lot of stuff, those are the people that tend to have many, many gods and the people who are poorer and, and the poor in spirit, they will have one god. There's a lot of small g gods around today, aren't there? There's a lot of us and we, if we're not careful, we become our own gods. But here it's laid out, if you had one thing here in the whole Old Testament, in the whole Bible, and you followed it, having no other gods except for the God of Scripture, why, you'd be in a pretty good place there if you simply did that. So this is very crucial, central, the first thing. Man has a duty, the creature has a duty to the Creator, and he alone is God, and so we are to recognize that. So be careful, it's very easy to fool yourself and put a lot of other things in front of God, and you've got a whole bunch of little gods scattered around to deal with. God says, no, you're my special treasure. And from now on, it's you and me. Okay, so he's addressing his people as a group. And he's laid it out here. And he's put, put down a very clear, there will not be any idolatry and stuff going on here. So we'll say more about that tomorrow morning as we get into the second commandment.